Welcome back to the show and what a valuable and insightful episode we have for you today. We are joined by Daniel Germain, who is a marketing science leader and senior data product manager. We will be focusing on how to know your business. How can we as data folks invest in the domain to get true business value. We'll be talking about the data product manager, maybe even leaving your ego at the door and maybe becoming an analyst for a bit longer and so much more. Enjoy. Daniel, welcome. Know your business. Why are we talking about that today? Um, why is it important for data science? Uh, well, know your business. I think it's one of the things that most of uh, companies are uh, kind of struggling nowadays when mm -hmm. working with data. Um, you know uh, that these days, every company, even the smallest one, has data profiles, data people yeah. working into uh, business topics in order to improve, to optimize, to make things work better. But there is a kind of big struggle from the data profiles that are not willing to know the business and they are mostly focused on being tech people. And this mm -hmm. applies mostly to data engineering teams, data scientists, and even data analysts, which usually tends to try to be more like data scientists or working on advanced topic of analytics instead of staying on the business, which is the the, the competitive advantage that these kind of mm. roles have. So know your business, in my opinion, is one of the key things to success for a, for a data person nowadays mm -hmm. in order to prove the value of data to the business. And I think it's the best way of boosting your data career mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of continue focusing on the technical or let's say the, the, the deep understanding of data topics. Mm. I think it's been highlighted even more so in recent times. Obviously, money is no longer cheap. Businesses are looking for value. Data functions are, are not cheap. Um, they require an investment. So why why are we investing in data, firstly of all? What, what's, what's the biggest value we're getting? I would say companies are investing in data because of the fear of missing out. Everyone knows and everyone is talking that data is the new oil, is the new oil mm -hmm. of the companies. So everyone is trying to get data people to their companies, to their teams and make them work. But what's the problem is that when you bring people together and you don't organize them under a well structure that is moving toward business instead of toward tech, as for mm -hmm. example, software engineering, what happens is that you bring people to work in data, the results are not coming, and you bring more people because, again, you have the fear of missing out because you yeah. know that at some point, one person from the data team will bring you a silver bullet to make your business grow and boost. So you keep pushing. It's just like you keep adding fuel to the, yeah. to the company but without any uh, organization or any uh, education towards what the business is doing, this is just, um, let's say, kind of like burning money. So the fuel that you're putting is mm -hmm. actually to burn your, uh, your budget instead of making it uh, more efficient. It's not a recent, I mean, it's not a recent occurrence, maybe 2010, it was data science is the sexiest job uh, in the world. So companies have been aware of, of the value of data, but why is it taking so long to understand what is actually required to, to get true value? Yeah, I, I think that, as you mentioned, a couple of years ago, data scientists become very popular, mm -hmm. but I think that, and this is something that I usually try to, to, to apply to, to my teams and, and, and to, my, to my jobs is you cannot skip uh, stages. So, and, and I do the comparison usually like with the, with the human being. Mm -hmm. So if, if, we, if we think about like how, how humans uh, run, you have to think that first you have to stand up, 
then you have to walk, and then you have to run. Yeah. So if, if a company comes to me and says like, hey, Daniel, I would like to do data science, the first thing as a data, as a data person that you have to think about is like, okay, data science, do we have data governance, data management? Do we have mm -hmm. analytics? Do we have the, the, the forgotten business intelligence team working? Do we have the solid foundations of data in order to go to data science? I think that sometimes companies are missing these points and they would like to go like from zero to 100. Mm -hmm. and, and they just want to have like, hey, bring me a data scientist, bring me a machine learning engineer, and we will boost, I don't know, marketing, fraud prevention, recommendations and engines, like everything, just with a data scientist and a machine learning engineer. But at the end, it's just like, what is the, the the new oil is the data so you have to you have to to start from the beginning you cannot skip stages and um, unfortunately due to the urgency of companies to to prove results they just want to go to the uh, to, to the last stage they just want to run mm -hmm. but you have to do the let's say all all, all, all the preparation to to to, to to get to that place where you can run. So who's responsible for, I mean, data is decisions. It's that's yeah. what everyone's doing it for. Why is everyone rushing for, to better decisions and, and better decisions now? What, what's driving it? Well, first of all, I would like to say that data is not decisions. Data is assistant decisions. Uh, and, and this is something that also, uh, internal stakeholders sometimes uh, confuses. So mm -hmm. for example, in my, ex in my experience for the last five years, I was working with marketing people, with marketing teams. And uh, it's something that takes time for, 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 the, for your stakeholders to understand that you are just kind of advising them, kind of mm -hmm. providing insights so that they can make the informed decision. Right. You cannot expect that the data team will just tell you what you have to do it would be ideal but in order to do that you require that the data team knows your business so you require that for example me as marketing size that i know marketing that i know if we are talking mm -hmm. about pay media how the pay media platform works if we are talking about referrals that i understand how, what's the dynamic behind the referral uh, and this is something that not most of the data teams are doing because usually how companies structure data teams is just like we have a technical team mm -hmm. that has data scientists and these data scientists sometimes works for, I don't know, marketing, sometimes work for products, sometimes work for even finance or HR. Um, so it's difficult for the, for, for the data people to come and say just like, hey, I will make the decision for you because at the end, I don't know the business. So it is important that when we talk about uh, uh, data and decisions that both parts understand that data will provide the insight will support the decision but at the end of the day the decision is always on the business side so how how are we i mean this goes into knowing your business and, and really understanding your domain a, a lot of maybe smaller companies are centralized in their data functions because they have they can reach most of the business at, at what point are we specializing and should be advised to get into domain specific data teams uh in my experience the the best or, or let's say yeah the best approach to for a data team to succeed is to be domain specific is to be close to the business mm. uh, fortunately uh, I was working always in marketing teams yeah. on the data function. So mm. I was really close to, 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 to my business. And if you ask me, I think this, that's the competitive advantage or that, that is the competitive advantage of my team compared to the rest of, of the structure. When sometimes you have, for example, a centralized data science team or, or, or business intelligence or now, uh, machine learning team that tries mm -hmm. to provide support to the full company that that could be useful for let's say providing 
platform solutions for for the company or for mm. providing tools for 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 the for the whole company but yeah. if you want to solve some business specific uh problem you require that your data team is part of that of that business so that's that's why for example we don't talk about like data science in marketing mm -hmm. we already shrink the, it's like we put it all together it's like marketing science yeah are we and what are we risking if we don't do this so the things that we are risking is the the definition of the requirement so for example if let's let's imagine that we have a, a centralized data team mm -hmm. that provides uh support to any any domain in the company as technical people what we usually try to do or we what motivates us most of the time is applying new solutions mm -hmm. you know so we are going to be always focused more on the tech i say like hey i was reading this article i was watching uh this the, 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 this uh this tutorial i was reading about this paper so i would like to apply this so when yeah. the, when the business requirement comes what we are going to be trying to do is try to try to model the requirement mm -hmm. right, to apply this new technology or, or or this new approach that we were learning about uh so and i think is that's that's kind of what happens with uh last year with uh llms everyone mm -hmm. was trying to apply llm to any yep. business domain we don't even know when if there was a problem to solve but every company tried to have their uh let's say um implementation of generative ai mm -hmm. to solve a business problem that no one even knew that existed before that so i think that the risk of having these centralized teams and not having uh data domain specific teams is this translation of the requirements and also usually what happens is that your stakeholders are not clear with the requirements or they also misunderstood what a data team can provide mm -hmm. that's talking about marketing because it's my domain it's like hey yeah. i would like to i would like to optimize the budget that i spent in this channel yeah okay that could be the requirement that comes to the to, to, to the to the central team mm -hmm. but how the channel works how the budget is it's it, it's it's consumed what are the things that come to play in that optimization is something that someone has to discover so if if in that case if 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 your stakeholder or your or your business counterpart is not very specific most probably the data team will build something mm -hmm. that will not be solving the, the the problem do you think we should be evolving titles for away from data science to maybe marketing science business science to really put emphasis uh on? yes actually actually yes i think that uh, and i try to make the 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 comparison in in, in my head as uh, as in medicine just like mm -hmm. you know it's just like you go to university you study you become a doctor cool you're a doctor now if you want to do a surgery you have to take your time doing the residency of, of surgery in order to then be able to do a surgery yeah i think that here is the same it's like you got your um let's say you prepare yourself to be a data scientist and you have let's say the the, the generic view of like what a data scientist could be doing and mm -hmm. also this is something that that is seen in the in the company's definition of like who is a data scientist who is a data analyst or who is a machine learning engineer it's yeah. always kind of mixed uh and even now there's a new one which is decision scientist um so I think that at some point, when we start working in data, we have like, a, let's say, um, part of our of, of our uh, scope that must be defined. And, and mm -hmm. that definition comes with the business. And I think that what gives you the, the, the chances of, of success is your business knowledge. So for example, in my case, I am leading a marketing science team and my advantage regarding all the data leads is that I know my domain. So if someone wants to do something within the marketing domain, mm -hmm. most, most probably will at the beginning 
will have more chances of failure because they're only thinking about like the data approach without uh, analyzing like what the business needs and how the business works. So mm -hmm. I think that every data person, and, 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 and I would like to make this broad, so data engineering, data analyst, data scientist, decision scientist, mm -hmm. and also the new one now, business scientists, which I think is what, what we have to do is like that, what we have yeah. to go towards is like, hey, you come with your data background. And when, when, you, when you join a new company, when you join in a new position, the first thing that you have to do is like invest time in knowing your business mm -hmm. so that then you can define and you can choose the battles where with your data background, you can provide insights. So what's holding us back? What, what's, what's stopping companies from moving into this? Well, um, I, I, I have, I have, a, 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 I have an example about like how, for example, the hiring processes usually, usually goes, mm. um, when, when you're hiring for a new position in data, usually just like the requirements are like data background, of course, depending on the seniority, you have different, different, different skills. Uh, then that the person ideally, uh, worked in some projects similar to the ones that you have in your, yeah. in your portfolio. And at the end, it's just like, okay, business domain. And, and when you interview people and you have like these, uh, discussions with, uh, with all the hiring, um, managers of people that participate in, in, in the role, usually there's one thing that everyone says, just like, Hey, the business can be learned. If it has the, the data background, the business, the business can be learned. Mm. Great. Totally agree. The mm. business can be learned. Now the person joins and the first thing just like, okay, we have, uh, we working with this agile framework. You have to deliver this, 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 and that, and no one allocates time to know just like, Hey, mm. this is our business. This is how we do recommendations. This is how we do marketing. This is how we do, I don't know, supply chain and uh, take your time getting in, into into the basics of uh, of marketing and once you feel comfortable about this let's start thinking about like how we can work on it mm -hmm. um it, it, it's kind of surprising but you have people sometimes that were part of teams of marketing or uh, supply chain or fraud that they never learned about like hey how do we do fraud or, or what are the, what other companies do in fraud? Mm. And so at the end, it's just like the thing that we also usually say in the, in the, in the, in the, in the hiring process, like this can be learned. We yeah. then never, we then never give them the chance. And also something that must be also considered just like that the person that is joining must be willing to learn. And this is also something that happens uh, sometimes uh, not now, because I think that now companies are uh, way more picky with the, with, yeah. the, with the profile that they are hiring. Mm -hmm. But I think that three or four years ago, when there was still like the boom in the pandemics of like everything working, um, like the digital era was like in a boost. Yeah. Com companies were having kind of like, Hey, we have a pool of hiring. So we interview dozens of data profiles. And then we are going to be defining just like, okay, who goes to marketing, who goes, so who is going to be working with Daniel, who is going to be working, I don't know, with, uh, with, with Matt and, uh, mm. who's going to be working with Joseph. But at the end, just like if, if the person that is joining is not willing to work with Daniel because he's not interested in marketing, mm. then, then it doesn't matter if, if, if the person is just like, I don't know, it's the, the, the best ML engineer in the world he will be always having something that is going to be pulling him back of, of showing uh, all, 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 all their potential. Hmm. Who's, who's taking ownership of this? And I, I know we've spoken previously and you're a, you're a fan or you're, you've been on, on board with the data product manager. So tell us more about that profile and what your thoughts are there. Well, I think that the data product manager is is, is the role that comes to partially solve this, 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 this problem. Mm. And, and, and why I say partially, because ideally 
we should have the data product manager and also we should be having the data profiles willing to be part of the business you know mm. uh, but i think that companies found in the data product manager the dpms uh, kind of the solution to try to uh, reduce the gap between the business and the tech why is this because usually the teams has a lead and the lead is always a technical lead is is a person that is usually um, most experienced from the from the technical side in order to define just like data approaches modeling implementations uh, so the, the tech lead is not the suitable person or let's say it should be but mm -hmm. currently it's not the suitable person to to, to 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 reduce this gap so pairing the tech lead with the dpm makes this distance to the business shorter but the question is just like okay it's difficult to find data per data people that has business background so how can we find let's say a business person a dpm with a yeah. bit of with a bit of data background mm -hmm. so that so that also your data team recognizes in the dpm a person that is bringing value and is, is not just another stakeholder do you think we should do you think it would be easier to find a business pm and get them up to speed with data or do you think it's a real challenge getting a technical person who likes so, process to think about the bigger business picture i think that nowadays um it's easier to have the first one it's easier to have a business person that starts moving towards data especially because nowadays uh data is kind of let's say the democratized it's like everyone has access to mm -hmm. tools everyone has access to learning material now there's no need for a, for, a, for a business person to know or, or to do like a two or three years uh career in order to apply some kind of like predictions uh, segmentations mm -hmm. algorithm or to try at least an, a minimum viable product in order to identify if there is an opportunity with data so I think that the business people that have interest in moving to 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 roles more like tech or data driven has really the competitive advantage because they know the problem they have to solve yeah. and they have now easy access to tools. So I think that at some point, very technical uh, profiles in terms of data at the moment should be worried. I think they should be start thinking about like, okay, um, now with, and, and I think that, that the example is, is, is quite clear, no? It's like now with ChatGPT, if you answer or, or, or any of these uh, generative AI tools, if you ask the right question, mm -hmm. you, you will get a response of at least where to focus. Yeah. So who knows how to ask the right question? The business people. So if business people ask the right questions, I'm not saying that the output would be the ideal one, mm -hmm. but will be good enough rather than if you compare to a person that is going to be still thinking about like, I have the answer, but I don't have the question. So is this useful? So kind of bringing those home. So do you think that the technical and the business will split completely so that we need the platform the data quality and the technical data people will be focused on data quality almost but then the data scientists will need to be as close to business and business value uh, as possible as almost a, a divide that's going to be needed yeah definitely definitely i think that companies should focus a lot in um the fine let's say the the right data so having a strong foundations of uh data generation and data management mm -hmm. uh, from the technical from the technical perspective and then from the from the exploitation side i think it's it should be uh more on the business side 
So if you are working as, as a data scientist, you should not be afraid of being considered of being considered a part of the business, even mm -hmm. though that we know based on the based on on, on historical uh, um, behavior that data roles are always considered tech roles because of the of the of the technical background, yeah. uh, and sometimes data people feel kind of like a downgrade when they see like okay now I'm part of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they should not be they should not be uh, seeing it on that way. And if at some point you have the chance to of experience this as, as a data person, just like, hey, I'm working in the business domain and I compare myself, my understanding and my solutions to the solutions that maybe a, a centralized data team can, can produce, you will be able to see the differences like how 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 more informed you are in order to start the process of getting the informed insights for your for your stakeholder. Yeah, you can have the the strong, the best trained, fine-tuned LLM, um, the sexiest tools, but if it's not creating value, because, it's worthless. Yeah, because actually I, I you mentioned now something something very interesting, like this kind of like, for example, fine-tuned. Okay. Fine tune for what? For gaining 0 0.01 of better accuracy or better precision to solve or, or to make a prediction. It's like, okay, I think that most companies are not at that level of sophistication to require these technical people that do that level of uh, of, of, of fine tuning or like or, or specific solutions. Mm. So now what, what we need is like we have a lot of business problems that we need to understand how to tackle with data. And I think that there's no company, I would say, yeah, of course, maybe the, 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 the big force have, have the, the, the chance to focus on like, on improving this kind of like yeah. very, very, very specific uh, algorithms with, which then we all use. But uh, in general, um, companies has, uh, has more common problems that we need to understand first and then try to, to, to provide the solution. And also it's not only this of provide the solution, it's provide the solution, test it, prove that it's working on the business, mm -hmm. and then move into and then move into or another or another project, or do a fine tuning if we see that there is a chance of getting a return of investment of our time in getting this like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 uh, mm. improvement. So to progress your career, solve the business problems, not the technical problems. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Business problems is is what we are hired for. I, I, I'm not. I'm. I, I was not hired to develop a fancy uh, machine learning pipeline that automates. I don't know uh, all our marketing. Uh, yeah. All our marketing investment. Ideally, I should be getting there. But again, that would be like running the marathon. And I first have to start walking and understanding, for example, like, okay, how we do the how we do things, how the business do the things, how we how we can start going toward this end to end, for example, pipeline. But you cannot jump from one stage to another without doing the training. Mm. Better to walk in the right direction than to sprint. In the wrong one yeah nice well that's a, a fantastic way to, to to round us off um conscious of time um where can we find more about what you're up to this year what are you excited about how can people ask you more questions if they have them well actually uh i'm, I'm really excited uh, about this year uh after a couple of years working in marketing i will be jumping to another domain so usually when we talk about marketing, we talk about user acquisition and getting people to your, your to your product, to your platform. Um, in June, I will start a new, a new uh, challenge, a new, a new, a new, let's say, um, job, uh, more focus on customer retention. So on the second stage, let's say of the, of the, of the customer life cycle. 
usually if you, if you see marketing you just like have like 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 this double view of funnel the first yeah. one is the, the part of acquisition the second one is the part of retention so i will i have been mostly focused on the first one now i will have to invest a lot of my time to know my new business which is the customer retention and the definition of lifetime value and how we can bring the most of our customers and bring for them the most so i'm really excited about that uh it's gonna be a, a a game changer for me because i will have then the full view of the of the customer life cycle mm -hmm. again in the in the in, in the e-commerce so i'm coming back to to the e-commerce uh, yeah. domain so so really really happy and uh, yeah looking forward to to know my new business exciting year ahead a lot of learning a lot of time to be invested in a new domain yeah. but i'm sure a lot of transferable skills um to bring with you it's been an absolute pleasure daniel thank you for joining us oh thank you for your time and we'll speak soon ciao ciao ciao, ciao.